Hi class, uh, welcome to my midterm walkthrough for this particular class. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit about, about myself and also I'm going to talk to you about what I've learned in the class thus far, what I want to learn in the class moving forward, and also um, uh, I'll walk you through six people's works that have influenced me and what I've learned from the other students in this class um, thus far. Okay, so I'm going to start a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Travis Lee. I'm an instructional designer with the UC System, University of California. And I took, I took this class because I really wanted to learn more about digital storytelling and how to become a better storyteller. Um, <clears throat> when I signed up for this class, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I've always had a fascination with stories since I was a young boy. I remember I had a toy dinosaur that was like a puppet. Its mouth would move. I called him the storyteller. And my friends would sleep over and we would dim the lights. And I'd bring the storyteller out and craft a scary story about ghosts or demons. And it was really some of the best times I had was actually being, um, being a storyteller. I continued to write stories uh, and tell stories through high school, but along the way I kind of lost interest in telling stories and began, like most people, just to consume stories as in books or audio formats. <coughs> um, but this class has really taught me to, to love writing and love storytelling again. I think the sheer volume of work in this class um, has really engaged a dormant part of my brain that was dedicated to storytelling and just crafting stories or, and also writing in general. Writing lots and lots of volume has, has made me a, to a better writer. I've learned that not all stories are written in the traditional formats, like, um, but the future of storytelling is very different than the past uh, because of the digital formats. But the same, at the same time, the principles of good storytelling, no matter what the format, is the same. The stories must be engaging, they must be unpredictable, the audience must be kept guessing what's going to happen next. And there has to be great characters. Um, and so that's what I've learned so far. I've also learned that technology and digital storytelling is changing the way we both tell and consume stories. The future of stories are much more participatory. Oftentimes when I read a news story, for example, I just read the first few paragraphs and I scroll down to the comments. This shows to that in today's age, the thoughts of the audience are oftentimes just as important as those of the author. I've also learned that digital storytelling can work better than traditional storytelling formats for certain students. For example, students and children with learning disabilities. Oftentimes students with learning disabilities have a hard time with the planning, revising, and completing of traditional stories um, in the written format. Digital storytelling, which includes audio and vis uh, video formats, um, can really help those students with learning differences have more options that might better be suited for their learning style, allowing them to excel and tell their stories in a more effective way. My, my goal for this class is to become a better writer and learning to tell better digital stories. I also hope to create a storytelling format that works really well in higher education. Working for the UC system, I'm working with a lot of um, students between 18 and 22 years old who are looking to tell stories but don't necessarily have a strong writing background. So I think that the digital format might help those students as well. Um, I also hope to learn about how technology can influence storytelling formats and how we might leverage technology in order to tell better stories. Um, but at the same time, not overdoing it like, uh, like Hollywood might, uh, where the special effects become more important than the foundation of, the, of a good story. All right, I'm gonna move now to the work of the, my fellow students in this class and we'll talk a little bit about that. The first uh, person's work I'd like to review is uh, Condalisa, uh, is Luisa Condalisa's scholarship review of Let's Redefine Disability and Difference. Luisa brought to my attention the very immediate and important need for people with disabilities to be able to tell their stories. In the article, she reviewed the author's, uh, she, she reviewed, the, in the article she reviewed, the author discusses a project where people with disabilities were given a platform to tell their stories and their experiences living with disabilities. In America, about one in six people is li living with some sort of disability, and it's a travesty that we marginalize this community, both politically and culturally. Um, in our image-obsessed society, people with disabilities are, also, are often um, not given any platform to tell their stories, and we need to be given, allow them to have the opportunity um, to to tell their stories and for people to have empathy towards those people with disabilities. And this, this particular piece really hit home with me as I work with a lot of students with disabilities in, in my job right now. All right, so the next piece I'd like to talk about is a little bit more lighthearted. Um, 
This is a, I'll play a few minutes, a, seconds of it. Okay, so this is a really lighthearted piece that was created by Ashley Padilla. She created this video of a field trip she took with her students to a farm. I really like this video for its simplicity and general theme. Living in Los Angeles, I rarely see farms, and students of LA, I don't think they have ever seen any farm. And uh, yet, we all have to eat food, and, and the agriculture in our society is so important. I believe that um, agricultural education should be mandatory for all elementary school students. My mother grew up on a bean farm, and I recently inherited this farm, and I hope to pass down the farm to my newborn son. The farming lifestyle and importance of responsible growing is more important than ever as water shortages and lack of crop diversity is potentially going to cause a massive self-induced disaster. I believe uh, a video like this could be used as a possible virtual field trip for those students who do not have access to a farm. But you know, I just really like this video. It was really fun and um, I, I uh, think that farm education is something that's really important. So I, I, I commend uh, Ashley for making this video. All right, so the, the next video I want, uh, next project I want to talk about is Robert Piper's uh, What uh, Do You Hear What I Hear? Walking in uh, Yuing Jongbu, uh, Korea. I'm probably pronouncing that all wrong. But here, I'll play, play a small sample. <laughs> Okay, this is really weird and haunting and interesting. I, I just like this piece. This particular piece by Robert Piper captivated me because of the haunting soundscape he was able to produce by just walking around a city in Korea. The sounds like, like it doesn't sound like any other city. Um, I mean, I guess it sounds like an Asian city, but not a city that in, a, in America. Um, it's distinctly Asian. I've lived in Japan for three months and uh, I was always taken uh, by the background chatter of the Japanese language. Uh, there's something both mesmerizing and frustrating about living in a country where you cannot understand or speak to the people. <laughs> so um, this piece by Robert Piper brought, brought back those memories. Uh, kind of isolation. Uh, uh, there is a rawness to the audio and at the same time there's a famili familiarity of this kind of city life and uh, that I've grown accustomed to over the years. I really enjoyed just listening to the city that he lives in and it made me think about my own life and the things I've experienced. So good job, Robert Piper. All right, so this is um, the, the fourth piece I want to review is uh, Haley Christea. Um, and this is entitled Three Things That Made Me Happy Today uh, on the Daily Create. Um, so I'll play a short thing, short snippet. Today's Daily Create is prompting us to share three things that have made us happy today. And I work two jobs. I've been attending graduate classes. It's very stressful. Uh, first, we'll be visiting... <coughs> okay, so in this video, uh, Haley talks about three things that made her happy today. It made me think about how dispersed we all are, yet at the same time, we are all struggling making ends meet. Um, she opens her video with telling about how she's working for working two jobs and as a full-time grad student who's getting very little sleep. I think we can all relate to that. Um, we are so caught up in our own lives, we often forget that there everyone is struggling and suffering through, through the same thing that we call life. Um, we, we see uh, such a manicured facade through the lens of social media that um, you know pulling that curtain back and, and ha having Haley talk about you know the struggles of her own life and also. Um, talking about her upcoming vacation. I mean, that's what, what this video is all about. It's really exciting. Um, her, her, I mean, her opening lines were both refreshing and honest. Uh, from there, the video discusses uh, uh, the vacation that she's going to take in Europe, someplace I've never been. Haley's looking forward to um, seeing a Romanian fountain, going to a cat cafe, going to a soccer match. It was really uplifting to hear about this vacation. I really hope she enjoyed it. Um, her, vi her video reminded me that we're all in the same boat and also maybe happy that she's um, going to about to take this amazing vacation that uh, she planned. Okay, so the next piece I want to talk about is uh, Lisa Fisher's critique of the podcast Serenity for Working Moms. Here it is. Um, this reminded me that we need to slow down and prioritize. Lisa opens her blog by telling the audience that she was having a hard week at work and she was uh, feeling overwhelmed. And this is not uncommon for people in this program since most of us, if not all of us, are working 
at least, at least in some in, in some way. Um, <clears throat> she discussed the podcast Serenity Before Working Moms specifically. <clears throat> and in this podcast, she found like most working moms, there are more activities in a day than there are hours. Um, she, just, just, uh, she discussed the need to prioritize family and at the same time having high expectations for both work and career. This really hit home for me because my wife and I just had a baby about two weeks ago. I know that after my paternity and her maternity leave is over, we're going to enter a world of pain that all working parents feel. Um, and my, my main takeaway from this blog is that it's okay to mess up and it's, it's, uh, it's not okay to not be everywhere at once. And it's okay to realize the limitation of both time and money when raising a child. So good job, Lisa, and uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you posted this uh, article. All right, and the last piece I want to review is a, um, is a digital story a critique by, uh, by Heather Schlitt, and her critique is of a portrait of Lottie, which I'll show it really briefly. Okay. Okay, and as you can see, the girl is getting older. Let me fast forward to the end. And she becomes a pretty young woman. All right, uh, so in this piece, A Portrait of Lottie, uh, a parent has shot their daughter regularly, I don't know, maybe every month, over 16 years. And it really shows the audience vividly the experience of aging from a newborn to a teenager. This really spoke to me because of my newborn son, just born a few weeks ago. The piece tells a story that is both profound and a, and a, and a universal human story. As time passes um, and we are blind to it on day-to-day -day life, but um, really we're changing it all, all the time. And when 16 years is condensed into a four minutes uh, video piece, is a very, very vivid reminder of our own mortality. I've seen a lot of picture a day videos on YouTube, but this one is much more real and interesting because it, um, how quickly Lottie changed from frame to frame because she started off as an infant, right? So a lot of these, uh, these picture a day were started as a teenager or maybe as an adult and just like shows them kind of aging slowly. But as we all know, kids, they change so quickly. Um, this made me think about my relationship with, 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 my, with my parents and uh, how that might have changed over the years and what it took to, for her parents, Lottie's parents, to keep up with this, even though her relationship was obviously changing with her parents. Um, and... Uh, this is a video of this young woman, but I don't not. This also made me start thinking about what, uh, what is her rights as a as a person, Lottie? Like she was photographed. I mean, I look at pictures all the time on Facebook of kids, and like every single day, there's people taking pictures, of, parents taking pictures and putting it up on Facebook. Who really owns those images? Um, and do do young children have the right to control their own image on on Facebook or on social media? Because by when they're sixteen and they sign up for their own Facebook account, there's going to be, I don't know, thousands of pictures of them online already. So that's, uh, that's uh, it was brought up a lot of interesting points um, in, this, in this video. And so, yeah, good find, Heather, and I really enjoyed reading about, um, uh, reading about her thoughts as well on this aging video. All right, so those are the, my review of other students' work. I'm going to conclude in a second. All right, and thank you for taking the time to... Uh, go through the, my gallery review along with me. I have um, put it on my blog space so you can do the just the reading as well. So, But if you're watching this, you've actually sat through the very long, long video that I've made. Um, I really enjoyed this class so far. It, 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 made, it made me a more prolific writer. I have, uh, it brought me out of my comfort zone and I just loved watching other people's uh, videos and enjoyed reading your stories as well. The class has challenged me to rethink what stories can be I really enjoyed um, the sense of community that we've that we had in this class. Even though we've never met, I still feel like you know I'm in the class with you guys. I look forward to the second half of this class and learning more about you guys and seeing more of your work. And thanks for all your feedback this semester thus far. And uh, good luck with your own uh, with your own classes in life. Bye.